Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and today I just want to walk you through all the cool off-road specific mods that I've done to my 2014 Honda Adventure Grom. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. I bought this Grom about a year ago. Uh, you may remember that it was white and looked very very different when I bought it and I spent a bunch of time customizing it and adding mods that I thought would make it more off-road worthy. The whole point was I wanted to get a Grom and make an adventure Grom out of it and I think for the most part I've done that. I didn't want to modify the suspension or the engine at all. I didn't want to do anything that involved one because it's over my head in terms of mechanical ability and two because it, if you start doing that stuff it ceases to be a Grom and starts to be something else and I really wanted to see what a Grom could do off-road uh, you know, trail riding in the woods, gravel roads, stuff like that, moto camping even, in relatively stock form just with some considerations added for protection and to make it easier to do that type of riding. And so I haven't done any major mods, I had no big bore kit, haven't done anything with suspension, all that is stock. But what I have done is bolted on a bunch of mods that I think one, make the bike look cooler, and two, have made me feel a lot more comfortable taking it off-road knowing that, you know, I'm gonna drop it or have to ride over the occasional log and things like that. So I just want to walk you through all the mods. I have a full build series, but I don't have a video just kind of running through the mods quick and dirty. So here they are, all the off-road mods on my Honda Grom. So let's maybe start with the rear of the bike and work our way forward. And the first couple things I want to show you, and I did some of this work myself and some of it came with the bike when I bought it, which was neat because I got a little bit of a head start on the mods I wanted to do. But this is a rear rack. I honestly have not been able to find this specific model in order to link it for you. But uh, I like this rack a lot because it just goes up and bolts here underneath. And it's pretty sturdy. I put a bunch of gear on there, so that's been really nice to have. So highly recommend a rear rack of some kind, if not this one specifically, if you're building yourself an adventure ground. And the other cool thing back here is this integrated tail light. So you'll notice the turn signals are gone. This is a tail light slash turn signal that the guy before me put on and he did a tail tidy too. The only thing that's missing here is the license plate light, but I don't really ride at night anyway, so I don't really care. But uh, that's something that could be added back on because I had the bracket has the space for it. Let me show you what it looks like. Kind of neat, right? I mean, it's pretty, maybe it's not as easy to see, but uh, in terms of really cleaning up the look of the bike, I really like it. This is the Giant Loop Hot Springs heat shield, which actually, this actually comes with their bags when you buy a bag that requires a heat shield or you might want a heat shield for. This came with my Great Basin bag. So when I ran my Great Basin bag on this for moto camping, I had this just as a peace of mind thing, but no issues whatsoever. That was super handy. And the other big thing to show you back here is tires. So there's about three or four tire options for the Grom that'll fit the 12 inch tires. And these are the Maxxis scooter tires. They're the Maxxis Nobbies. I don't know that they have a model name specifically. These are fine. I like them on gravel road. These are the ones that were on the bike when I bought it. These are the kind of big blocks. And I think that these are a little bit better option for the kind of terrain that I ride in most often because they have these solid channels across which kind of act like a paddle. So in the mud and the sand, that's gonna be a little bit better, I feel like. If I was gonna get serious into trail riding in the winter, I would definitely swap out for these kind of big blocks. I like these a little bit better of the two is what I'm saying. Moving forward on the bike, one of the best additions that I made was these are the Two Brothers Racing Honda Grom foot pegs. The stock foot pegs were narrow, they had rubber on top, and uh, I just didn't dig them at all. So these are a lot better for off-road riding if you're gonna be standing up. Wide off-road style foot pegs from Two Brothers. They were very easy to install and they worked really well. So standing up is a lot easier with these foot pegs. Tank bag, this is the Giant Loop Buck and Roll tank bag. The Grom is a small bike, and so I didn't want a big bag taking up a lot of space on it. Giant Loop sponsored this build, so they sent me this buck and roll, and it's been perfect for the Grom. And the nice thing with the buck and roll is it's exactly the right size for your cell phone, uh, for anything that would be in your pockets. I can't get my tripod in there, but I can get my camera in there. Uh, I've managed to put a flask and a small travel humidor for cigars in it on a moto camping trip, so it's been a great fit for this bike and I really like it. It's not in the way at all when I'm trying to stand up or do other stuff. And up front here, as you can see, is where the bulk of the modifications I've done to this bike are. I removed the stock front fender. It was a hugger fender and I just was really worried about mud getting caked under there and then the wheel not turning. So I pulled that off and what I've done instead is these are the fork guards off of a Honda Monkey and they bolt straight on right here. I just got these on eBay, two Honda Monkey fork guards, one for each side. 
and bolted them on, no problem. I like the look of these a lot better and it eliminates the fear that I had about this front tire getting balled up or getting stuck under the fender and you know washing out in me or whatever. But I didn't wanna go with no protection at all up front, so I got this, it's called a Motard fender on eBay. I actually did a terrible job installing it because you need some spacers, but they don't come with any instructions or anything, so I didn't know that. So I actually busted it and I've <laughs> fixed it with a little bit of this a little bit of Gorilla Tape, because I didn't want to order another one. But that Motard fender gives it a completely different look. A little bit more off-roady style look, and it does offer some protection. And the other thing up here that's cool is these are flush mount turn signals. So it's got a really clean look, no bug eye, no bug antenna stuff sticking out. And the guy before me that I bought this from actually did these too. So these flush mount turn signals are super bright, and they look cool. They're very bright. So if you're worried about not seeing them at all, no, you can totally see them. Rocky Mountain ATV sponsored this build as well. And I'm really, really thankful for their help. And this was my first experience with the Tusk Deflex Pro handguards. And I'm very impressed with these handguards. I've actually since put them on the KLR and I'm gonna be running them on basically every bike from now on. These are sturdy. These are way sturdier than any of the Acherbys handguards or anything else that I've used. Pretty happy with these. Got the black to match the bike. I've also got, you know, this won't surprise you if you're a fan of the channel, but double take mirrors. I put double take mirrors on everything. The nice thing about these double take mirrors is you can just fold them out of the way if you're riding anything remotely difficult, you want the bike to be a little narrower, and if something hits them, they just turn like that. So, uh, which is, you know, a big thing when you're riding off-road. I run into branches a lot. I like to go explore the tight abandoned stuff. There's a whole build series on this bike, which I will link for you, which you can check out if you want to see how the individual pieces went on. The handlebars were probably the most complicated thing that I did. These are the Pro Taper SEs, and this is the KLX 110 Bend, which bolts right onto the Groms. You can see I had to drill out spaces for the switches and stuff, but you have to do that no matter anytime you put on new handlebars. But I think they look sick on there. It's a little bit of a wider stance. They're a lot sturdier, you can tell. The stock Grom handlebars have a weird U-bend, like whoop. Really weird, not great for off-road riding. These I feel a lot better about, especially if I'm dropping the bike and it's landing on the handguards and stuff. And here you can see, these are the Pro Taper Pillow Tops, which I put on just about anything. These are my favorite grips, so I put them on all kinds of stuff. I like those grips a lot. They're very comfortable, cheap, and easy to install. I've also got custom levers on this bike but that is just a, an Amazon special that the guy before me put on. Nothing spectacular, but they are a little shorter and they look a little better than the stock levers, which are big and long and bright silver. This is the quad lock. My favorite mounts, as you guys know, but it's not just the quad lock. So the mounts here on the top, the vibration dampeners underneath it, but this is also a USB charger, which plugs in here. And then it's charged my phone. It's not wireless, this one. Power for riding around playing Pokemon Go or navigating in the woods, whatever it is. It's a great bike for playing Pokemon Go on, by the way. Can't beat it for that. Big question I get a lot is about skid plate. Uh, are you gonna do a skid plate and or why did you not do a skid plate? So the Grom has very limited ground clearance, which is dangerous. It means you're gonna hit it on things. Uh, as you can see, I dented the exhaust shroud there. So I'm no stranger to that. There's one company that makes a skid plate for this bike that I'm aware of. It's T-Rex Racing, great company, but you actually lose about an inch of ground clearance with it. And this thing has such limited ground clearance as it is, I just didn't want to give it up. It also adds a lot of weight. And there are other options. There's a skid plate that the exhaust header comes down through the skid plate, but what is the point of that exactly? So I decided to not do a skid plate. My plan was to just kind of be careful about picking my lines and try to avoid bashing the exhaust on things. And there's nothing really you can do about it. You can't relocate it because it comes straight down out of the bottom of the engine. So you're kind of stuck with this downward pipe. And so I did get this model on purpose because it has the high mount exhaust, which I thought might keep it out of the mud to keep the end of the exhaust clear. But in terms of protecting it, it was a choice between having almost no ground clearance or having slightly more ground clearance, but having to be careful. And I just decided to go with be careful. The other thing is to mount that skid plate, you got to put the full crash bar set up on it. And I just didn't want to add all that weight to this bike. Anytime I dropped this motorcycle, the handguards hit first. I figured I was as protected as I was going to be with that and i take my chances with the rest so far so good if you want to see some adventures on this bike i took it moto camping i have a whole adventure ground playlist which i will link for you and the other big reason why i'm making this video is i'm uh, i'm thinking pretty seriously about selling this thing not because i don't like it not because it doesn't do what i built it to do it it, it does do what it, i built it to do it's awesome it's so fun to ride but i'm just not getting out on it very often I'm just spending a lot more time riding a lot longer distances and camping and doing all kinds of other stuff farther away and so while this is a fun project and it was fun to dink around on, it just doesn't get ridden and I kind of hate that. I would rather see it go to somebody that will ride it and use it for the purpose for which it was built. So if you're at all interested in Adventure Grom in your local or local-ish or you would drive to Oregon to pick it up, let's talk. I am gonna 
list it sometime soon, probably. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have questions about the Adventure Grom, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I had a lot of fun building this bike and I've had a lot of fun riding it. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I thank you. Excellent! Yay!